I invite you to take your hymnals and let's sing together. 261, Fill Me Now. Hover o'er me, Holy Spirit, bathe my trembling heart and brow. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, oh come, and fill me now. Fill me now, fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, oh come, and fill me now. Thou canst fill me, gracious Spirit, though I cannot tell thee how. But I need thee, greatly need thee. Come, oh come, and fill me now. Fill me now, fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, oh come, and fill me now. I am weakness, full of weakness. At thy sacred feet I bow. Blessed divine, eternal spirit, come fill with power and fill me now. Fill me now, fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, oh, come and fill me now. Cleanse and comfort, bless and save me. Bathe, oh, bathe my heart and brow. Thou art comforting and saving. Thou art sweetly filling now. Fill me now, fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, oh, come and fill me now. Good singing tonight. Thank you much. Take just a minute and greet each other in the name of the Lord. For tonight is Romans 3.23. It's a verse that's very familiar to many of us. But once again, like we normally do on a Wednesday night, we want to take it and put it into context. So I'd ask you to, as you go to Romans chapter 3, we're going to start reading in verse 19. And we're going to read uh, all the way down into verse 25 just to get the context of what we're looking at here. It's Paul's letter to the church of Rome. And he says in verse 19, Now we know... That what things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, 
that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. I want you to think closely about what's being said here. He's talking about the law, or the giving of the law. What was the law for? He says that all their mouths may be stopped. In other words, we'll see and know the perfection of God. And when we see and we know the perfection of God, there's something that God wants us to do with that, with that knowledge, that understanding. Does anybody, did anybody catch what it is? To understand that you are a sinner. <laughs> you cannot live up to the perfection of God. And that's what Paul's laying out before him. Look at verse 20. He says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Uh, what an amazing passage that that is. When you really sit down and look at what Paul is explaining to the church here. He's saying, listen, he goes, the law was given. Remember, he has a, a large Jewish population that he's preaching to. In that Jewish population, they've lived their entire lives upholding the law or striving to uphold the law. And it's an amazing thing when you see what God says when he tells them, for all have sinned. Doesn't matter how good you are. Doesn't matter how good you are at upholding the law. Doesn't matter how good. Even your righteousness, even your good deeds are in God's eyes are as filthy rags. You need to understand how much you need Jesus Christ. And folks, that's what the verse is all about. Even though, we, uh, even though we, we, we all have sinned, the Bible says it causes us to fall short or to come short of the glory or the perfection of God. And uh, a very important word in that verse is all. There's not anybody that lives up to that. The only person that's ever walked the face of, the, the face of this earth that lived up to that is the person of Jesus Christ, God himself. So, All right, if you have your Bibles open, then I'd ask you, or you can look at the back of your prayer sheet if you want to, Read that. Let's all stand and we're going to go through our memory verse together. We'll go through it a couple of times and then we'll have a word of prayer. All right. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. Okay, now rest your lungs, breathe in again. Let's try that long one again. Here we go. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. I almost hate to just give that verse by itself without adding Romans 6.23. Because in Romans 6.23 then it says the wages of sin. In other words, because of your sin, you deserve to die. We don't deserve God. And then you got that really big word, but. But the wages, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's go to prayer. Father, as we bow our heads before you in prayer uh, this evening, I thank you, Lord, uh, for your word. I thank you, Lord, that it's tried, it's true, it's tested. Father, you've proved yourself in multitudes of areas, multitudes of setting, uh, settings through your word. You've shown us what truth really is. And Father, you've led us in truth. You've led us in righteousness. You, you've promised us that we'll follow your word, Lord, that it will prove itself to be true in our lives as well. I pray, Father, tonight you would be with us. Guide and direct our services tonight. Lord, I thank you for the testimonies we're going to hear already. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in the hearts and the lives of our kids and, and our leaders. I pray, Father, that you would continue to bless us and help us to be able to see uh, our need to follow you on a regular daily basis. Uh, Father, lead us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. We thank you, Lord, for this ability you've given us. Pray now, Lord, you'd bless this service. Use it to your honor and your glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. As I said, we're going to have a little different service tonight. We are having our teenagers. They've come back from camp. This is one of my favorite services uh, throughout the year. It's one of my favorite services because we get to see and hear a little bit about what God's doing. I've said for years, ever since, well, years, when I was a youth pastor, when I just started out as a youth pastor, or a youth worker even back in when I was a junior high youth director, one of the most important things in a, in a, in a teenager's life, and I'll be real truthful, is, is, is a good camp. Going to a place, and what's neat about it is, is, is they take people out to a place where there, there's no other interference. There's not the, the world's not there. We get rid of the radios. The kids can't have their phones with them. Did you guys like that? 
They, they, they take phones away from them and they just put them in, they kind of seclude them. And then they began to teach them the word of God. And you don't have the influx of any televisions. You don't have the influx of the world. And then you have a leader that's there with you and they're, they're trying to show you what God has done in their life and how God has moved in their life. And it's amazing to sit back and to watch what God does. And uh, this year's been a great year. I know we got a chance to go with our, take our juniors to camp. Leslie and I did. And uh, so we'll have some testimonies. We'll have a testimony in here as well. But uh, also just, uh, I'll, I'll just turn it over to Ethan, Pastor Ethan at this time. So anyway. He kind of uh, already took most of the thunder, so um, I'm not really sure what I'm even here for. So, uh, no, uh, we will we'll do just a brief, uh, we've got a little short video here, um, just a little snapshot of uh, junior camp week and, and our teen camp week, so.
from the glory of heaven he willingly came to sorrow and suffering to seek and to save he bled and he died and he rose from the grave now he's only a whisper away what a savior what a savior what a savior is Jesus my king what a savior what a savior All right, so that's just a brief snapshot. Really, there's no way to encompass an entire week of camp into, uh, you know, that was like a 30-minute slideshow. But um, no, I want to just, again, thank you all for being a part of donating stuff to our garage sale so that we can sell it for you and uh, get rid of it and all that whole process. We appreciate uh, your everybody's involvement. Uh, everybody who donated something was a part of us going to camp this year, so we appreciate that. I, I want to start, and I, I want to try not to steal too much thunder of the teenagers and the speaker this week, Rich Tozer, I went knowing who Rich Tozer was, know, having heard him as a speaker before as when I was a camper, and I liked him a lot. I, I thought he related well. I, he was a tall guy too, much taller. He's actually 6'6", six, six, so he's a pretty big dude. And I just, I loved his preaching. And I went this week from enjoying Rich Tozer, kind of knowing who he was, to uh, just absolutely falling in love with the guy from a preaching standpoint. Uh, he did such a great job of, of relating, uh, relating and also teaching, but not just teaching and telling information, but exuding it through his own life. Uh, and you'll hear some of that from our teenagers, I'm sure, just in his scripture memory ability and things of that nature. But uh, one of the things that I, I told our teenagers on uh, Sunday was, my, my least, and I might get kicked out of doing this job if I say this, but um, I, one of my least favorite things is actually being a sponsor at camp. Um, I've, done, I've been a camper, I've been a counselor, and I've been a sponsor. Of those three, my least favorite is being a sponsor, and that's just because I'm selfish and I enjoy getting in there and, and doing the things. But one of the things that I've realized is being a sponsor is I can't ever go back and, like, I could maybe counsel again, but I can never be a camper again. And my encouragement to them was, you know, do these things, be as involved in camp and things as you can, because you'll never be able to go back and be a camper. Once you graduate high school, your camping days are over. Um, and so I always try to encourage that. And like I said, not just because, you know, camp's not the only place that you can grow closer to God. There's, you know, it's, there's obviously other areas in life that you can do that, but uh, it's a very unique thing. I was talking to uh, Ryan Wilder today. I got a chance to visit with him. And he was, I, I just asked him, I was like, Ryan, am I, am, I, am I crazy? Like, am I the only person who enjoys camp? Or like, do you feel the same way? Or what do you think? And his response was, you know, absolutely. He, he loved camp. He has good memories of camp. Uh, just the way that God worked in his life. Uh, you know, camp obviously holds a special place in my heart for two reasons. Uh, not only was it where I met my wife, but it was also where I, I, uh, I was called to preach. I felt the calling of the Holy Spirit, calling me uh, to full-time ministry. So, um, you know, and his, his, his viewpoint is a lot the same way. If Ryan wasn't having all of the things that he had going on, uh, that was God's calling on his life as well. And I think that is still God's calling to some extent on Ryan. So, uh, and God used camp to do that. Um, and so I'm thankful for that. I'm, I'm thankful for uh, the ability that camp has to be unique in that way. Uh, you know, we talk about the mountaintops and the valleys of life. Being a camp is kind of a mountaintop experience. You're there, you're with other believers. Uh, when you come home, it's kind of a rubber meets the road. Uh, it's kind of a, p a punch in the face even at times. Um, but my encouragement to our teenagers is keep going. These, these, uh, these decisions that you've made, they're not just camp decisions. Uh, they are lifetime decisions, and they are things that will benefit you for the rest of your life. So uh, that's my encouragement to you, obviously, um, and just uh, keep those things 
uh, in the forefront of your mind. Uh, we are going to hear from both our teen and junior campers. So I believe Noah wanted to go first here. So come on up here, buddy. My favorite part of camp was all the activities. I went fishing and I caught three bluegills and one bass with Slim Jims and I found a hot, hot dogs by a tree to use as bait. I went canoeing and I went to the snack shack. I shot a 22 gun and I went rock climbing and I made it to the top. I learned in chapel to take the next step in my faith in Jesus. I decided to get baptized. Psalm 37, 23 through 24. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way through he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Thank you for supporting me and sending me to camp. Hello, my name is Evelyn Julian. This year I got to go to primary camp. Something that God has taught me is to take a step. That means to obey and do what God is calling me to do instead of just talking about it. For me, that is baptism. Thank you for... Um, thank you for allowing me to go to camp. Thank you. Thank you for sending me to camp with Ron and Leslie because I learned that we should be kinder to our siblings and make our one decision about going to heaven or hell. I really liked my counselor. Her name was Kaylee, and I really enjoyed her. I look forward to going back next summer. Thank you. Okay, so first I'd like to thank all the people who donated to the garage sale, just that allowed us to go to camp, and thanks for those who helped with it, just so we could go. Um, so camp this year was a lot of fun. There were a lot of games. I think I definitely had a better time this year than I did last year, but my favorite part of camp was just like the messages that Pastor Rich preached, the, specifically the one on Wednesday, which was around, focused on strongholds and like your quote unquote addictions. So it just got me to think like, what are my strongholds? What things do I need to work on? And he said one way that you could help it defend your stronghold was through scripture memory. And I just thought, I really need to work on scripture memory. That way in times of trials, I can quote the scriptures to help me get through it. Thank you. So uh, first, I'd like to thank all the people who uh, gave stuff to the um, garage sale so we could go. And um, uh, my favorite part was the messages that Pastor Rich preached, um, especially the one on Stronghold and um, about using um, uh, the, uh, like, your guns as, like, your um, weapon and, like, the sp scripture memory is your bullets to fight off um, the Strongholds. So, thank you. Thank you for all the people who donated to the garage sale. My favorite thing about camp was probably the messages that Pastor Tozer preached on, especially the one on Wednesday about the strongholds. Uh, there were lots of activities, like Ultimate Frisbee, which I really enjoyed. And my counselor was awesome. His name was Aiden. Thank you. That was Connor Sullivan. Those of you who are like, who is that kid? He uh, came with he came with Reed, friend of Reed Reed Newells. 
Before I went to camp, I wasn't sure if I was saved or not. And then after I had a one-on-one -on -one with my counselor and she gave me some verses to memorize, I am now 100% sure that I am saved. And I wanted to thank everyone who donated something to the garage sale so I could go because it was an amazing experience. I highly recommend it if you haven't gone yet because I got to meet many Christian friends and grow in my relationship with Christ. And so, thank you. What I learned at camp this year is on stronghold of how you can stay closer to God. For example, have a prayer time and read your Bible or devotions every morning and before you go to bed. So listening to the messages really helped me grow closer to God. And what my mom said, you aren't going there just for the fun. You're going there to learn about God and grow closer to him. So thank you, Pastor Ethan and Leah, for taking the time and energy to take me to camp this year. Thank you. I always have to write mine down because I get so nervous. <laughs> but um, So my favorite message was the very, very first night. I could see um, we, most, me and Ethan are like, oh, this is going to be a great week of camp just from that, uh, that first message. Um, so we knew it was going to be a great week after our very first chapel service on Monday night. We saw the Holy Spirit orchestrating the service when the camp director, Josh Burkholder, introduced the theme song for the week, Jesus Can Change Your Life. And when the speaker, Rich Tozer, preached the message on how God can use the miraculous healing of the lame man um, to lead 5,000 souls to Christ. Um, it was a rebuke to me when he mentions the example of the, example of the healed man's response. Um, his enthusiasm radiated throughout his daily life. Um, Acts 3, 8 through 10 was a passage that he preached from, and it says, and he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. And all of the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at which had happened unto him. My daily walk, whether I'm at home, the grocery store, or at church, should exuberate Christ. Others should see Christ in me. One of those quotes he used, uh, Rich Tozer used in his message was, it's not a cultural Christianity, it's the dead being made alive through Christ. My enthusiasm in life needs to reflect that Christ, what Christ did for me. I was made alive in him. So instead of serving at church like a checklist or a duty, I need to joyfully do it out of worship to God. All right, well, I, first of all, I do appreciate that you send even this old lady to camp to camp as well. Um, it is I just I just love it. Ever since I started going in my twenties, um, I wish I had gone younger. But when um, I had a certain young lady that came up to me and she was all excited about going to camp, and I told Pastor Ron, "We got to go. That's just one, but we got to go." Um, she was so excited, even a week before VBS, she's like, I'm packed and ready to go, Miss Leslie. And I'm like, I got to get through VBS. And you know, Emily, hang on. <laughs> so, um, and it was, it was worth that one little soul. Um, but then, God blesses us even more, and my grandchildren um, ended up coming the last three days. I didn't know if I would ever see that day to where I'd go to camp with my grandchildren, but I'm afraid I'm not that old, so we did. Um, and it was just a joy seeing them, too. Um, the speaker at ours was evangelist um, Adrian Burton, Burden, and he, the very first night, I knew it was just kind of like Leah was saying, it was, it was good. Um, he talked in the book of Ruth when um, Ruth, you know, the... Ruth's sons had died and she was left with her daughter-in-laws and she had nothing for them and she um, 
you know, she told them, just go back to your people. You know, leave me, I'll be, I'll be fine, go back to your people, whatever. Um, Adrian talked about so many times we make decisions every day. And there's either good decisions or there's bad decisions. Of course, that's our options, right? Um, but then he was, he was like, but no matter what you do, you need to make a decision. Are you going to decide to serve Christ now, today, for the rest of your life? Are you going to be wishy-washy about, your, about what you believe? Um, but that just really stuck to, stuck to me because um, Ruth told Naomi, I'm not going anywhere. She made a decision, and it was a decision that she never regretted, again, because God used um, Ruth in her, in her life um, just where she was, and, and she made that decision. She didn't even have to, she didn't think anything more about it, and I thought, you know, that's really, that really just stuck with me. Make a decision, and then stick to it, and even at the older we get, we, we still make decisions. But a long time ago, um, at the age of 16, when I had put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I never believed where God would take me. And here I am today, and I'm so thankful for that. And um, it's a decision that sometimes it's hard, <laughs> but I am so thankful that God is, has used that decision. And and just reminds me to continue, um, continue on for Christ. All right, thank you teenagers. I appreciate very much, uh, not just the fact that you went to camp and enjoyed camp. I, I want you to know how much I appreciate you guys coming up and giving a testimony. That means a lot. Uh, it means a lot to all of our folks to know that uh, the efforts that were put into going to camp, the efforts that were put into going to sending y'all to camp were well received. And I want you to know how much I appreciate that. Now I've told everybody I'm not gonna preach tonight, and I'm not, but I'm gonna ask you if you would please to turn with me in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter five. Uh, everybody knows pretty much how I feel about camp, and I, I've, I've appreciated many years of being able to go to camp, the, op the opportunity to be able to uh, just get in a, in a place where everything is separated, everything is different, and, and the focus is Christ. And one of the things I've told you all for years that I like about camp, y'all aren't leaving, are you? Good, thank you. <laughs> it will be just a little while here, but I really would like to talk to the teenagers, I'm sorry. And I'm not just talking to teenagers tonight, but I really do want you all to, if you have a pew Bible there, if you don't have a Bible with you, grab one underneath your pews because I want you to see something tonight. The reason why I wanted to take you to this place is because I want you to see something that, that uh, Paul calls the church of Ephesus to, and I want you to see how he says it. He says this, he says in verse 13, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13, he says, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Kids, I want you guys to see something. You've, you've seen light this week. Uh, you've, you've seen a part of what God wants to do inside of your life. In other words, you've seen what it is that God focuses on and what God presses, and you've seen uh, the press of God in your life. I wanna encourage you to understand that what God is showing you is light. For years, I, I remember looking back at my life when I was a teenager, and, and I really did have quite a bit of a misspent youth. Uh, didn't really understand I was angry at my church. I was angry at my youth group. I was angry at the things that were around me and that surrounded me. And, and I really didn't live my life for Christ. So the reason I never got to experience camp as a teenager is because of that. And you guys are getting something that I, I just keep looking back at my life and thinking, you know, I wish that light bulb would have come on earlier. I was a Christian, I knew Christ as my savior, and I know I did because Christ was always convicting me of my sin and, and pressing me back to him. And, but I always just wish I would have recognized it earlier. I wish I just would have seen it. And I, I keep thinking, of what, what, could have, what could have happened? What, what could God have done if I would have just listened to him? And teenagers, this is the light that you've been able to see. 
God really turned that light on in my heart, in my life, at about the age of 21. I was a Christian, but all of a sudden, it was kind of like God said, Ron, it's now or it's not going to happen. And I said, God, look, I, I'm not doing anything halfway. I'm, 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 if I'm coming, I'm coming all the way. I've given you my testimony before, today, so I'm not going to go into that tonight. But what I want you to see is what Paul points at here as he writes to the church at Ephesus. In verse 14, it says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Kids, I want to, I want to challenge you tonight. What you've seen is light. God's given you some light. And what God does in giving you light is he's saying, awake from the dead. Listen up. You have a life in front of you. I remember when I was a teenager at about the age of 17 years old, the guy who finally got, got me to open my eyes and to start looking around me from this area was a man who really wasn't even a Christian. He was a science teacher that I had in high school. Named Mr. Walker. I'll never forget him. He got in my face because I cut up in his class one day and he got it. He was only about this tall. But he came and he got right in my face and he said, listen, I'm not going to treat you the way other teachers have treated you. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I'm not sending you to the office. He goes, you're going to stay in my class every day and you're going to sit right here and you're going to listen to everything I've got to tell you. And he says, I'm going to make sure it's going to be my goal that you're going to learn in my class. And all of a sudden I was challenged. And my deal was I'm not going to learn in your class. But he set me right beside his, his overhead projector, and then he would always talk to me, and he, he embarrassed me a couple times. And he said, what's that? And he said, and, 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 and I, he said, what's the answer to that, Mandeville? And I said, I don't know. And he told me again. He says, okay, I'm going to ask you a little bit. I want you to tell me and repeat this back to me. All of a sudden, the challenge was on, and, and guess what God was starting to do? God began starting, or God was starting to turn a light on by a challenge. Kids, you, you've been challenged with the Word of God. I want to encourage you, what you do with what you've been given is completely up to you. There's nobody in this audience, there's nobody in our church that can turn off the light that's been turned on inside of your heart and in your life but you. Nobody can turn that off. It, it, it's God. It's something that God does. And, and he says, listen, he, here in verse 15, or verse 14, he says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. The light that you've seen is just the beginning of a tunnel. It's just the beginning of the light that's at the end of the tunnel and you've seen it. I want to encourage you to start following the light. How do you do that? Well, let me tell you one of the easiest ways to start doing that. Start your relationship with Christ every morning. When you get up in the morning, don't, don't wait until the alarm rings to wake up or don't wait until the alarm rings. You're, you know, you're running out of bed. You've got to go get this done, this done. Set your alarm early if you have to. Let it go off and lay in your bed for a while and talk to God. How do you talk to God? Well, you know what? That's kind of, it's a little awkward at first. Sometimes you're laying there like, hey, God, what's going on? And then you think, hold it. Everything's going on with God. He does everything. He knows everything. And you're sitting there, you're going, how do you, and then you start, I start thinking, well, how do you talk to God? The Bible says I can talk to him as a friend. And I started realizing that those struggles that I was having during the day, I can bring those before God, any of them. And you know what I can also do? I can also say, hey, Lord, I'm struggling with this. Why? Because he already knows. He knows everything about me. He knows everything about you. And, and folks, listen, I'm, I'm turning because I, 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 I really want to, the kids to understand this. But folks, listen, this is a message for all of us. Understand we have a God that loves us. Understand that when that light turns on, God shows us this tiny little light in the end. And all of a sudden, he says, listen, if you'll wake up, if you'll begin to listen to what I have for you, I'll begin to reveal the light. And kids, listen, you, you've seen something that, that amazes me that you get to see somehow at camp. And you don't see it oftentimes in other places. And, 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 but once you've seen it and once you've understood it and you begin to taste and to see that God is good... It's an amazing thing that God will do in your life. Verse 15 goes on and says, See then that you walk circumspectfully, not as fools, but as wise. There comes a point in time in your life when you've got to look at the things you're doing and you ask yourself, are these really wise? Even as a teenager, I mean, is it wise that I spend the time doing what I'm doing? Is it, does it make any sense for me to sit down and, and, and to do this certain thing for 30 minutes or an hour or two hours? Am I gaining anything in this? Or would I be better off if I was to take that time and spend it with something that would be good? I mean, something like, like 
Hey, Dad, you got anything around here you need help with? You want to blow his mind? <laughs> hey, Mom, would it be okay if I started doing the dishes? You know, you think about it, those are great places to get started walking with God. I, I, those are just a couple of things that, I, that, that come to my mind. I'm just, I'm just throwing things out there. But he says, see then that you walk circumspectfully. I don't think that there's anything walking uncircumspectfully in asking your mom and dad if you can help them out with something around the house. You say, Pastor, you really think you're really trying to tell me that that's, a, that, that's, that's religious, that's a holy thing to do? I'm thinking the Bible says that I'm supposed to honor and respect my parents. I think it's a good place to start. Let God, let God grow the rest. But he says, don't, he walks circumspectfully. Don't do it like a fool, but do it like a wise man. God's given you some wisdom. He's shown you some things. And then he goes on in verse 16, and he tells you why this is important. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Folks, listen, we can look around us and see that the days are short. The Bible says we're supposed to redeem the time. You know, I look back at my life and I look at the years that are wasted. I, I see them as, as what the Bible talks about when he says the years that the locust ate. I think back to the Dust Bowl times and the stories I've heard from Oklahoma about Dust Bowl, how, how, the, how, the, uh, how the grasshoppers came in and they ate everything. I've even seen pictures of them eating the, a wooden handle out of a pitchfork and all kinds of stuff like that and how they just ate everything up. And how all those things were gone and people would walk out and they'd go, how am I going to work? How am I going to do anything with, with everything gone, everything shattered? And that's kind of how I entered into my life, into my life, into my walk with God. God, how do I do anything? I've shattered my reputation. I've shattered my testimony. There is nothing left. And my deal is, God, take me somewhere where no one knows me so that I can live my life. And God said, no, I'm going to leave you right here. I remember the argument with God was, God, why, why would you leave me here? I, I've already messed up everything inside of my church. I've messed up things with, with people. And God said this, so they can see what I can do inside of a person who will give their life to me. Kids, I want to encourage you. Let this world see. Let this church see. Let your family, let your mom and dad see what God can do inside of the heart of a child, inside of the heart of a teenager, inside the heart of a man, or inside of the heart of a woman that will fully turn their life over to Christ. It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. I want to encourage you to make it and to make your decision uh, precisely and concisely inside of your mind that you decide you're going to walk with God and follow the light that's been set in front of you. That's my challenge I wanted to give to you guys tonight. Thank you very much for staying. If you guys want to or need to get up and go, you're welcome to go do that now. We're going to go to our prayer time, but you're welcome, whatever, Pastor Ethan. And